October 2023 will go down in Afghani history as an era-defining month in their cricket. Two big wins at the World Cup, first against the defending champions England, tonight against a dangerous Pakistan side chasing 283. Not easy against a bowling lineup that has the likes of Shaheen Shafridi. Afghanistan have given this World Cup another shock result, or as Harsha Bogle says, a contra result. Afghanistan will want to believe it's not an upset. They came here to win, and so they did. Quick buzz live it is Joy Bhattacharya and Zaheer Khan in the house. What a sensational win, Zaheer. All of us were on the edge of our seats throughout the 50 overs. Will they, won't they? But they did eventually. Well, you look at that uh, batting card and this is the most clinical run chase <laughs> we've seen so far in the tournament. Unreal. It just, uh, maybe that New Zealand run chase against England uh, comes close to that when Rachin and Conway batted the way they batted in that match. Yep. And this this comes close to that 130 partnership to start with. Ibrahim Zadran and uh, and uh, Gurbaz, you know, setting that platform and then Rahmat actually making sure that he's not out uh, playing that uh, important knock of 77. Uh, just uh, top four guys uh, finishing the job and the score was not a small one. It was 282. At halfway point, we thought uh, maybe 20, 30 runs extra. Pakistan should have it easy. Chennai pitch, we all know how it's going to behave. Uh, the spinners can uh, have that impact. The game will slow down, but none, none of that mattered uh, for this Afghanistan batting lineup. Such a clinical uh, display of batting. To win by eight wickets with one over to spare. Would you believe it? This is a horror show for Pakistan, but what a dream Monday night for every Afghani on the planet. Absolutely. I think we were the people who had the nerves. We were the <laughs> ones who were getting nervous. They didn't look nervous at all. They played it clinically. Every time Rehmat Shah was under pressure, he'd pump a ball, pass the bowler for six, yep. straight over the bowler's head. Yep. He did it. They did it very, very calmly. They did it without showing, you know, all the nerves. And remember one thing, and I was just looking at the data, that they have basically chased 74, 74 times before they've chased. They've won 38 times. But only five of those times have been against test playing side. Two against Bangladesh, two against the West Indies, and one against Sri Lanka. So really, this is the first time they're chasing against the likes of a Pakistan or an India and actually making it. And it's not a small target. We're talking 282. Mm. It's a big, big target. So this is a huge win, not just because they've won, but they've won doing something they have not been known to do well, chase in a 50-over match. Wow. Now, can you imagine? They're chasing 283 and only 130 of those came from fours and sixes. They've had to work really hard. It didn't come <coughs> easy. There was no, no, there was nothing flashy about this chase. They didn't take risks. It was clinical. It was risk-free, chanceless and beautiful. And that was required on uh, a venue like Chennai, isn't it? Uh, you've seen uh, on a Chennai pitch, if you go for those big shots uh, or uh, take those high-risk options, uh, then you can lose your wicket. Every time a wicket falls, the new batter coming in never finds it easy. Yeah. All those kind of things, uh, they've just managed it so nicely. And uh, you look at that first partnership also with the yeah. new ball, when the ball is hard. Those cut shots, uh, there was room on offer, but consistently being in control, playing the ball late, after that phase was over, running the twos hard... Uh, that is something being the hallmark of uh, their uh, their batting and they stuck to the, these principles uh, which actually just secured uh, them uh, the win which you're talking about right yeah. now. It's it's it's, it's a, such an intelligent win, isn't it, Harsha? It's in T20, yes, you can have a good joy. Sorry, why am I saying Harsha? I always have him in, <laughs> him in my mind when I'm anchoring the show. But uh, such an intelligent win for them to know exactly how to go about a chase. Maybe they borrowed that Virat Kohli DNA today as a team. Virat Kohli DNA, Ajay was smiling, we know our <laughs> old friend Ajay was smiling out there, but they did it 24 twos and two threes. 24 twos, you will rarely look at the World Cup record so wow. far in this tournament. 24 twos, why were they doing it? They were running the first run really fast and putting the Pakistanis under pressure and the Pakistani fielding the first 35-40 overs. I think they got a bit better towards the end, yeah. but the first 35-40 overs, it was a shambles. Their ground fielding was a shambles. Yep. And they took full advantage of it. Put them under pressure. Run fast. Run the singles fast. And that's what they did so very well. And that's what I like. They ticked all the boxes. Be under pressure. Hit the force. Big partnerships. Yep. 130 runs. Then again, another 60 run partnership. 60. And then another century partnership to finish. Yep. Or almost century. Yeah, 96. 96 it was. Yes, 130 for one. 190 for two. And that is how it was. That third partnership, Shahidi and Rehmat Shah, who came to the party just in the nick of time. Such a 
such a cool-headed innings that was because he personally was under pressure as well. He hadn't scored runs. All of us spoke about whether he should be replaced or not. Should they send in uh, Akram Alikhil higher up? Should they send in Rashid Khan higher up? Should the captain come in at three? But he's answered all those questions with an innings that is going to be part of Afghani cricket folklore. Well, everything came together beautifully for uh, Afghanistan. That's all yeah. you can say. And uh, that first uh, partnership, uh, which was of 130 runs, uh, really set that platform. We often talk about it. Uh, for a number three batter, when you're walking in uh, in a situation where you're already on top and uh, the body language of Pakistan bowlers were already uh, down, the shoulders were dropping. Uh, even though there was assistance to uh, spinners, yep. uh, that impact was never felt. Like at no point uh, you thought uh, that they were consistent enough to build that pressure. In a game like this, you always have to build that pressure, get the game in that scenario where the batters feel the need of going for that big shot. Yep. And I think that didn't really happen, which uh, helped Rahmat also uh, to just uh, play his natural game. Yep. And uh, the run rate never really uh, went below six. Like, you know, they were already always around that mark, uh, which uh, made it easier for them not to take those high-risk options. Yep. And uh, got uh, got really, really easy run chase for them. Yeah, it, they made it look easy. The openers, a 130-run partnership and that perhaps shocked Pakistan, who perhaps didn't expect Afghanistan to respond, uh, you know, the way they did. Yeah, I think I think that opening partnership was very important in a pitch like this because they also knew, as we knew, that scoring would get difficult in the middle. So if you see they scored plus six in the beginning, they scored just below six in the middle, then again plus six in the end. So that's the idea, that they know that exactly 60 in their first 10 overs. I mean, you're literally ticking over. I think, Zach, you said 60 exactly? Yeah. I think they hit the dot. They must have said, okay, Zach said 60. 60 is the right 65, score. 65, I think. Uh, yeah, well, close enough. I close mean, enough, yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's the thing, that if you look at it, I was also looking, there was a time in the, between the 34th and the 36th over, there was a point where Iftikar bowled three uh, dot balls, Hassan Ali came and bowled a maiden, then Shadab got two dot balls. But the moment that finished, that 11 ball spell finished, immediately two fours, nine runs, immediately they took back the initiative. Two fours in the next few balls. So every time that we felt that Pakistan was getting some pressure on, one of the batsmen had managed to release it and get a four. And I think that's the thing, that they never consistently got pressure on them. 37 singles, three doubles, 18 fours and a six. So there was a fair bit of variety. They had an answer for all kinds of deliveries. They did everything they had to. Uh, and they, they, didn't, they didn't seem to go in with one set plan, Zach. Well, I think uh, if we have to really summarize uh, the run chase, uh, is the way they've, uh, they've been patient enough and the way they've put uh, the bad balls uh, away. Yeah. Uh, that is something which was the hallmark of their batting. Uh, Pakistan bowlers did feed them those uh, those uh, deliveries which are outside of them. Yep. Uh, but they were uh, very, very clinical in, uh, in, in putting those away. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and to me, I think uh, that stands out. Uh, so even though uh, you you look at uh, that Harry Sarov's over when he first came into bowl, I think it was 17 or or uh, 18 runs in that over. After that, he followed it with with med, uh, maiden over. Yep. But by then, it's too late. You know, you were already made up for say a couple of overs. Uh, then, as as a batting uh, uh, batting uh, partnership, you can take that much time. So that's what happened, I think, you know, and that's why uh, you have to give credit to uh, Afghanistan uh, batters because they absorbed it, uh, absorbed the pressure beautifully and they set the tone so nicely at the, at the, at the, at the start of the innings uh, that uh, they just kept going from there. Uh, Pakistan bowlers didn't really have a chance of coming back uh, into the game. Yes, uh, Joy, they were 98 for no loss after 15 and at 40... They were 2-2-1 two, two, for 2. So, there was a stage when they seemed to have slowed down. They were taking a few dot balls. Take a look at that run rate after 20 and 20 to 40. It was under 5 while they needed pretty much close to 6 and over. But the fact that they didn't lose wickets kept them in the game. A, yeah, that means that they've scored at 6.8 before that. So, yeah. they've put themselves up there so they could absorb. So, moment you've put a cushion. So, if you say that, okay, 300, I'm going to go at 6 and over. So, if I'm going at 6.2, 6.3, now if I go down a bit, I have time enough to make up. So, when they finished, you notice they had about 92, 93 runs in 90 overs. Yeah. So, they always, the target was in and around 6 and never allowed it to go very high. And that's the secret of a good chase, that they never allowed the target to go out of hand. Because what happens when the target goes out of hand? You have to start taking risks. 
it never reached the stage where a batsman felt he needed to have a risk. Mm. So the maximum risk they took was Ramesh Shah just going straight and saying that I'll hit him over the top. But they never, you didn't see too many cross bat swipes, you didn't see sweeping at all. You just saw them wait for the bat ball, hit it. When they hit the ones, they made sure they'll hit it in a way that they'll try for a two. And more often than not, they've got them also. What's that good old-fashioned uh, Indian middle class advice? Elders often say, when, you're not, when your revenue is not too much, make sure your expenses are not high. So, they didn't lose wickets. Uh, even when they weren't scoring too many big runs, they kept themselves in the hunt. What did Pakistan do wrong? Let's take a look at uh, uh, the Pakistan bowling card. They used six bowlers. Iftikhar Emma, the ball uh, pretty well as well. But Shahin Shah Afridi, unable to... Um, bring those breakthroughs. He was used once again in the same template by Babar. Uh, could Shahin Shah Afridi, who is their primary weapon, could he have been used differently, Zach? I think their uh, bowlers didn't turn up. As simple as that. It's, it's not about uh, going in any direction. Yeah. It's just about individuals stepping up. Uh, when you're looking at 280 runs uh, to defend, uh, 280 plus runs to defend, uh, you are uh, just talking about the bowling lineup going out there and doing the job. Yeah. The fielding also was not equally supported. But as a bowler, uh, you you look at that bowling card and uh, you will see a story uh, that none of the bowlers were able to make that impact, barring maybe Hassan Ali to a certain degree because he was someone who was making that effort, looked like he believed in uh, things can uh, can change from any situation. Other than that, I think it was that uh, that little bit of worry, little bit of concern that, oh, are we going to lose this one? Yeah. Was very evident through and through that uh, that defense of Pakistan. And that was, uh, that was worrisome. So when you are thinking like that, you're already nervous, you're already anxious, uh, and uh, you will then make mistakes because the spinners, today there was no due. Yeah. So if there is no due, you, you, you have nowhere to hide. Uh, you just have to be consistent enough to get the ball in the right areas. And I think uh, bowlers collectively uh, failed uh, to, uh, to do that uh, for Pakistan uh, and, and that really uh, didn't help the cause. Would it have, could it have helped to get Shahin Shah Afridi in slightly earlier? He bowled I think 4-2 and 4 were his three spells. Should it have been 4-3 four, and 3 or 4-4 four, four and 2? I think definitely if you're... See, he came back for his second spell, the first ball he gets a wicket. You know, that's their first breakthrough. Exactly. And therefore, sure. reason to bowl him another. Yeah. So, my point is, I think somewhere Babar was reacting rather than... I, I mean, he was not really reading the situation that much or perhaps his calls went wrong because if you look at it, he didn't have faith in Usama Mir or Shadab Khan either. So, both of them have bowled eight overs on a pitch where if you see what uh, Afghanistan have done, they've really backed their spinners. Their spinners have bowled 37, 38 overs. Here, your top two spinners, including if these bowled actually well, your six bowlers bowled decently, your top two spinners haven't finished their quota. Hmm. On a pitch like Chennai, leaving four overs behind for the spinners means you really didn't have faith in them completely. Yep. And if you didn't, then you have to attack with your faster bowlers. Again, Harris Stroff finishing with eight overs, I mean, eight overs yeah. with an over left. Even if he had bowled the last, there would have still been an over left. So, I think the only bowler who turned up today was Hassan Ali to a certain extent. And you can see that by the analysis. I mean, he's the only one who gave less than four and over. And Ifti bowled very well for the situation in which he was in. Yeah. I think the strike bowlers that they wanted, the people they expected to get wickets, they didn't get it. And that first over from Harris Stroff, when he got hit for 17... I mean, that really was such an impact because he's already on the back foot. He knows that the World Cup is not going for him. And you can literally see his shoulders drop when, you know, that situation happened. Haris Shroff uh, was bowling quick. I saw a couple of deliveries at 147, 148. However, once again, from the outside, we know nothing about his, his, his readiness or is there a niggle or not. He was suffering from, a, from what they call a right flank injury. Is it is it that does he look like he's bowling full tilt? Have you noticed anything in his in his run-up, Zach? See, once you are playing the match, then you know you can be carrying a niggle. It's not that someone has not played with the niggle, and obviously the medical staff also doesn't clear you if not if you're not uh, if if you're going to be below par, then they're not going to ask you to go and play. Yeah. Uh, so if you are available, you have to find a way of uh, of putting your team in a situation where uh, you can uh, you can make a play or you can win matches. Uh, so. That is the case. That is the way I see it. I think that that shouldn't be the reason. Uh, it's just that the line, I think, uh, and the pitch today uh, and the way Afghani batters batted and I, I keep saying about those uh, shots through that point region oh, yeah. and there will be so many of those shots which, which they played, playing the ball late, playing in the gap, timing it well. I think both uh, Gurbaz and, uh, 
and uh, Zadran was was someone who really put them under pressure and uh, they were not able to uh, recover from that. You look at just two wickets falling and knowing that this pitch would have created all sorts of problem to a, a batter who is going to walk in. It's just about as a bowling group believing in that. Yeah. You know, so you can have a partnership building, but every time you've taken a wicket, you could have come back in the game. But unfortunately for Pakistan, that belief was not there. The bowlers didn't have that belief. The consistency was not there. That's why you can't even blame Babar at this stage because he has to. He had to turn to a new bowler. He couldn't consistently build pressure because the bowlers were not delivering for him. Uh, so he couldn't do much in that uh, scenario. It just uh, the bowling unit not turning up, not putting things together, carrying on to the fielders also. There's some misfields which you saw. Later on, it, it got better as the game progressed. Uh, but uh, by then, uh, the Afghani uh, <coughs> batter's belief of winning this game was, was much higher uh, than uh, the doubt which was created for Pakistan to defend the total. 16 overs, Osama Mir and Shadab Khan gave away 104 runs, no wickets. Uh, too many boundary balls, lots of them in the slot. Exactly. Shadab allowed the pressure every time to drop. Yeah. He just couldn't keep the pressure. Shadab and Osama were the people who were supposed to do the. They were the main spinners. You know, they would have really missed Mohammad Nawaz because left arm spinner, whatever. But it must have been an injury because on this pitch they would have definitely played him. Mm -hmm. But given that circumstances, the other thing you'll see is that if you look at this, the batting chart of the team. Okay, normally you'll see that especially in one-day matches, uh, white ball, T20, and one-day matches, there's a lot of run scored in that what we call cow corner, okay, yeah. between deep mid wicket and long on. Yeah. Okay. Today it was not the case. Lot of runs on the offside, lot of runs to the offside, laps, <coughs> a couple of laps, some going back of square. But that main, so that means very few cross bat shots have been hit today. Yeah. Which tells you that they were never in a situation where they had to take too many risks and go against the turn. Mm. When Rehmat Shah hit sixes, he hit them straight. So it's very interesting the way they batted today. And wh why did it happen? Because at no point did the Pakistani bowlers put enough pressure for them to have to do sh take shots like that. Yes. They didn't need to slog sweep because they were in control. Yes, Pakistan today looked like uh, a bottle of soda, an open bottle of soda that was kept aside for an hour. Soda without fizz. That fizz was lacking completely. They, As you said, they just weren't there. And therefore, uh, when a cricket fan or a cricket opinion maker or a journalist judges Babar Azam's captaincy, important to look at things in perspective where, I mean, a captain is as good as his or her team, isn't it? See, anyways, he's under pressure. There's no doubt about, yeah. uh, no doubt about that. Uh, but uh, today's bowling performance and the way a team was there on the field, I don't think you can blame Babar for this. Uh, it's just about bowlers not taking enough responsibility to defend this total. Uh, you can look at the two sides and, and say that last 10 overs also, you know, how Pakistan had to score 91 runs to get to this total, right? And then uh, then when when it came to bowling, uh, you knew that there will be uh, there will be inexperience in Bangladesh batting lineup which you can exploit. Uh, you can create a scenario. It's just about pushing the game to that level and it had to be done collectively. Yeah. So, a captain or just one man cannot really pull the the rest of the squad uh, on on his shoulders everyone have to have that belief and uh, and everyone needs to contribute uh, so i think that was uh, was lacking uh, and and that is the reason uh, this game uh, pakistan uh, couldn't defend this total collective failure the right words to use collective failure i mean none of the bowlers other than hasan ali who i thought bowled decently but even he was not really penetrative. I mean, he got a wicket, I know, but it's it's not as if he was looking as if he's going to take a wicket all the time. The disappointment was really the spinners. This is a pitch for spinners and yeah. they, they just, I think, let their team down. You mm. cannot have a performance like that from your main. Because if you look at the spinners on the other side, what does Noor Ahmed do? He's given them breakthroughs. Yeah. He gave them three wickets at a crucial time. Yeah. And Rashid, Rashid kept it economical, Noor got wickets. That's what made the difference. Here they didn't get anything from there. What's the impact of this result on the points table? Afghanistan were at number 10. They've gone up to number 6 now. Ooh, three teams at 4. This result uh, would have perhaps uh, made Australia very happy. England will also hope that they can uh, race ahead, race up uh, into the top 4 if they win uh, their remaining games. Uh, where is this tournament going, Joy? What's your assessment of where the, the table stands at this point? It's a very interesting thing because what's happened is of that 
so called top 6 that we are talking about two teams have really really dropped out to a large extent pakistan and england yeah so which means that basically the situation looks really good for india new zealand at this point in time south africa and australia, australia. also in that sense these the, the other two teams who are supposed to be threatening are now not looking good so they'll have to make a run for it but they might have a new runner now if afghanistan i'd like to look at the rest of their schedule yep. because this could be really interesting the way afghanistan plays from here on that would be really interesting let's let's bring up afghanistan first to see whether they have a, a realistic shot at the semi finals they will believe they do now uh, joy uh, two of them winnable Sri Lanka, with due respect to them? That's, that's all I'm saying. I'm saying if they win against Sri Lanka at Pune, which they might, and they have a very good chance against that. <coughs> if they win four, if they are four and three, then they will be sky high for their match against Australia uh, at Ahmedabad. I mean, I know that Australia will come favourites, but if by chance they win those two, they will come pumped up. Zach, what's your hunch? Well, I think one team might qualify on 10 points. That's the way it's it's heading. Uh, because they will be playing each other. And uh, you're playing nine games in total. Six assures you a sure shot uh, spot in that uh, top four. Uh, so, uh, maybe at uh, the fourth spot, uh, there might be one... Fifth one and run rate. Yeah, yeah, fifth and run rate. Speaking in uh, with run rate. So, you never know. Uh, but one thing for sure, we've, uh, we've spoken about before the start of uh, the World Cup. It's going to be a great World Cup if you have uh, the, the teams which are not expected to win, uh, starts winning. Four, yeah, yeah. And Afghanistan have beaten England yeah. and they've beaten Pakistan. Uh, they have uh, another two tough games maybe, Australia and uh, South Africa. But the way they are playing, uh, you, can, uh, you cannot take them lightly now from here. So it's, it's going to be a great World Cup now from here on in. Three very uneasy days coming up for Pakistan. They will remain in Chennai because on Friday... <laughs> They will be taking on South Africa. What are their fixtures like? Their next game is uh, to be played against South Africa in Chennai. From there, uh, they go to play Bangladesh in Kolkata. Thereafter, well, that's what it looks like. So, South Africa, Bangladesh, New Zealand, England. One looks winnable uh, with due respect to Bangladesh, but the other three. I Just the way the, the fixtures are stacked up, Joy, it, it looks very, 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 very difficult for yeah. Pakistan. Also, also, if they lose... Against South Africa, morale will also be down two and four. Remember, it's it's this, these are difficult tournaments because it's also remember Bangladesh. The pitch in Kolkata will probably suit the Pakistan team, but Bangladesh will have a lot of support in Kolkata. They'll have a lot of people coming across the border to watch the game. So you know they, it'll be like a whole, it could look like a home match for Bangladesh. Yeah. So think of all that. Think of the circumstances, and this is not going to be an easy. Also, I think. Now, before this, if Babar Azam was under pressure for losing to good teams, after losing to Afghanistan, he will be under phenomenal pressure. He'll be under phenomenal pressure from back home. Uh, it'll be very difficult. Yes, Monday night is going to be a busy night for a lot of uh, Pakistani YouTubers. We won't go there. But, Zach, it's, I mean, a loss is a loss. They were expected to win this game after putting the runs on the board. Babar Azam scored runs as well. It's it's tough being Mickey Arthur and Monty Morkel tonight. Yeah, it is. There's no uh, doubt about that. It's, it's going to be a very tense uh, dressing room. And uh, it's up to the support staff then to manage that. You know, So even though there are frustrations, even though there are concerns as, as a coach, as bowling coach, batting coach, you know, you're just going to be... Uh, Finding out ways of uh, reviving uh, their campaign. You know, that's how you always look at it. So, they will be right now putting a, a, a facade for sure. You know, keep all these frustrations, everything, everything uh, aside. And uh, try and uh, get that uh, spark going in the group. Because what, what teams through these kind of phases they need is, is just someone putting the hand up. Yeah. And I think that's what Pakistan uh, will be uh, looking for in their next games. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, you got to uh, you got to see the character of individuals also th uh, through this phase. Uh, so uh, Mickey Arthur and Moni Mokal will be looking at those uh, those characters. You know who are those players uh, who are going to just create that environment, create that energy in that group, uh, make uh, make a play out there, get a win under their belt. Win it in style and you need two people, you know, two people, three yeah. people coming together and then, you know, that thing, uh, suddenly the, the dressing room will look different. It's going to be a tough phase for them, uh, but uh, they'll have to look at someone to take that responsibility. Yes, Joy, if, if only the fielding hadn't let them down, who knows, the result might have been different. 
but we should not take any credit away from Afghanistan who have been fantastic on the night. They were fantastic on the night and as I said, again, Pakistan, the way you look at it is, look, forget everything else. If Pakistan wins against South Africa, they are 3-3 three and three and they'll fancy their chances. Yeah. It's just one match. One match, one magical performance, everything changes. Suddenly, 3-3 three and three looks... 2-4 and four and 3-3 three and three are very different results. Yeah. Well, pretty much every game from here on in is, uh, is like a knockout for Barbara Azam's Pakistan. So, we'll see how they respond after uh, this depressing loss against Afghanistan. The World Cup campaign uh, will move to Mumbai at the 1K Stadium. We will see South Africa taking on Bangladesh. Remember what South Africa did the other night? Scored 399. Henrik Klaassen was uh, in a very, very different uh, mood. Rossi van der Dusen was among the runs as well. And, well, even when they had a new opening pair, it didn't bother uh, South Africa at all. The big runs came once again at the Van Kede. South Africa uh, are proving to be a red-hot team, despite that one loss against the uh, Netherlands. And this venue is going to suit them. Yeah. Uh, one heady pitch, you've seen uh, extra bounce for their bowlers also. You, you've seen how they defended against England. Uh, the way they uh, they batted on that pitch. Uh, Klaassen <coughs> is, is someone, you know, who's uh, shown his class again. Uh, Marco Janssen contributing at the at the, at the the back end of the innings. And uh, uh, Riza Hendricks uh, starting uh, very well. Yeah. Uh, Quinton Ricock also will be looking forward to this game for sure. And look, because of the venue and the pitch they're playing on, I think uh, you can safely say South Africa will have the upper hand. It will be a tough game for Bangladesh. Well, Bangladesh uh, coming off a loss uh, to India in Pune. Uh, they've had some selection issues as well. Now, let's pull up uh, the Bangladesh uh, squad graphic to see what they can do. Uh, Tuskin Ahmed did not play that last game. Uh, and it, it looks a tricky one because the bowling seemed to have no, no teeth the other night. Yeah, no teeth the other night. But Tuskin, unfortunately, is not playing them tomorrow as well. They are very clear that his shoulder is not repaired in time. Yep. They are looking, they are waiting for Shakib to get fit because I think Shakib coming back to this team is important. See, because uh, while Nasum is a decent bowler, I mean, Shakib gives you so much more with the bat. And even for a decent bowler, to bowl under conditions like Vanke Day is very difficult for a you know spinner. Yeah. Shakib is very good at that, knowing how to fire the ball wide, how to. He's a tricky, he's a smart bowler under these circumstances. So I'm just looking at that card and saying that who does Shakib come in for? Because I still feel it's a straight swap for Nasu Mehmet. Because there's no point playing an extra spinner out here. It's not Vanke Day is not the place that you want to play too many spinners. Yeah. Zach, straight swap for you. Uh, Shakib comes in uh, straight away for Nasu Mehmet. Or well, of course, you? I think that's what uh, they'll opt, opt for, for sure. Uh, Shakib, uh, they need him for sure. Uh, and, uh, you know, his captaincy is something yeah. which, uh, which is going to, again, give that boost. Tuskin would have been a great uh, bowler on this kind on of a surface. Pitch. He would have enjoyed uh, bowling on this pitch. They'll have to look at that option for sure because uh, one Kede, you've seen at times, is very tough place for a, for a spinner to, to operate. Uh, so that uh, they will have to find a way. If there is option of, uh, of that on the bench, they might look at that. But other than that, I'm not seeing uh, them also uh, making any changes. It will be just Shakib coming in. Maybe bat first, put runs on board. Yeah, for Bangladesh though, Shariful and uh, Mustafizur aren't bowling uh, well either. So, well, a tough, really, really tough challenge awaits Bangladesh against a red-hot uh, batting team, South Africa. Uh, Riza Hendricks has given um, their first choice captain a headache. Temba Bavuma had fever the other night, couldn't play. And he, he had a, a great view from the dressing room. <laughs> For that fantastic batting show, what do they do now if he's okay? No, look, if, if the person who calls himself, he was known as Sachin in his locality <laughs> when he played. I mean, come on, you've got to give Sachin a chance to play the one day. No, honestly saying, he's the captain of the team. And like good teams, it doesn't matter what you've done in the previous match. If the captain comes back, he comes back, he takes his place on the side. And they go on his business as usual. They'll just know that Riza, there's a very good, capable reserve sitting out there. And what's happened in the last match is the one person who's not in form was Klassen, who was getting starts but not getting, you know, finishes. And he got a century as well. So, he got a century. Marco Janssen scored runs. Marco Janssen got wickets. I mean, I don't think there's anything more they need. Mm, runs for Hendricks, runs for Van der Dusen, runs for Marco Janssen, runs for Klassen. Everybody scored runs. So, if I had to ask you to, to pick one player to watch out for from South Africa, you could shut your eyes and just pick one and it would be a I, you good answer. You want Marco Janssen to continue with his form. Yeah, with the bat and the ball. Yeah, as an all-rounder. Right, but what do you do with Temba Bavuma? I think he walks in if he's fit. For? Straight shot. Riza Hendricks. Riza Hendricks? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, that's that's how it is. So he's picked. Why uh, would you change that? Tell me. Well, man in form, open well with Decock. Mm, but yeah, he's a captain, so I I, I understand <laughs> where you're coming from. Uh, player to watch out for for you. Look, for Bangladesh, it has to be Shakib. I mean, he's the only person who has the experience of playing under these conditions and doing well. And I would have gone for Tuskin has been there because this kind of the bounce in this pitch would have really suited his kind of bowling. I mean, yeah, you're right. I, I would go for the this thing for uh, South Africa. I'd just go for Decock. I mean, he has played so many innings out. He has won so many games. I mean, he has hit a ball in every part of the one kitty that on square leg side on both yep. sides. So I would say just let him come back and have a reunion with one kitty, as they say. Bangladesh for you, one player. Litton Das. Done deal. Uh, that's where we are and this is the time of the day when we give you the answer to the Joy Factor question, sir, all yours. Okay, simple one this time. Uh, current cricketers only batted to have scored more than 2,000 runs first 20 test matches. And of course, the answer is a man who's used to coming as a substitute all the time, concussion substitute, substitute, Mandras Labusha made 2,113 runs. I mean, only this is these figures actually, only Bradman is higher than these figures. I mean, that tells you the number of runs that he scored. He is, I mean, we, you know, sometimes when you're there and seeing history being made, you don't realize how good a batsman he is because it's right there in front of you. Mm. But his his test record is absolutely amazing. Stunning. The other trivia about him is that he's the only cricketer whose surname is most mispr mispronounced on the planet. <laughs> Labushen, Labushagne, Labushane, what's your favorite? I go with Labushen. Labushen, safer bet. Who is the winner? Let's uh, pull up the winner's name as well so that he can get a Abhijit NS, one of your regulars? No, new one? I think I've seen him at least once or twice. All right. Well done, Abhijit. Well done, Afghanistan. It's a night that they will remember. Pakistan will also struggle uh, to forget this night. Congratulations to Afghanistan for having beaten another world champion. Remember, they beat the current world champions, England, and they've beaten the 1992 world champions, Pakistan. A memorable night for uh, Afghanistan. Well done to, to their team. Thank you so much, gentlemen. And Craig Buzz Live will be back tomorrow for South Africa, Bangladesh at 1.30 p.m. Bye for now.